All right, I want to cover this because it hit me this week and I finally just had to do it. And it's setting up the queue system for N8N. It really wasn't bad. I did it in the middle of a particular day when the server was just getting flooded. Some of it's like when you run a test, it really takes up the CPU. So I'm going to talk about two things here. One is having two N8Ns, one to do your test in your runs and one to have your host, your actual site. But that's only when you get pretty busy. If you look here, we're talking really busy. Okay, now on a, a website that's you're doing N8N and you're only just getting going, don't worry about it, okay? But in this particular case, we were having a lot of processes going and then we were running tests as we were building new workflows and it just started to build up and it just started locking up because it got to that moment of one CPU limit. And I don't know enough about this stuff. ChatGB mentioned like, yeah, it, it, N8N is running on a thread, so therefore it will be stuck at that CPU even though we have 16 CPUs. So really quickly, I just read their docs, fed it to ChatGPT, and it gave me two files, and I ran it, and it works. I'm going to go through that with you right now. And so by the time you're done, you're just going to have a little bit more flexibility with your N8N install. Now, I happen to be using N8N 1.9, and then when I had one that was running 1.8, I didn't get this nice overview dashboard here, and I really like that. So just make sure you're up to 1.9, and I guess it's stable, so I didn't, I can't remember if that's true or not. And at this point, we're just going to change two files. So my N, and this is going to be N8N running on Linux and system D. So I have one file here that just runs the process. And really all I did here was, thanks to any ChatGPT, was to add this one line. And I think I added the key line too, so I could bring it out of a config file and into this. And pretty, all this stuff is pretty standard N8N install. But I also add these just so people can see because it really helps in the UI so they can see your domain when you start to share links. And I had some issues before with the version. So that's it. So I would go into the machine and then run those. Here I am in the terminal and I'm in etc system D system. And I would just nano that N8N and we'd be ready to go. I would have it here. I would touch the file to say, to create it, right? So you can just do, and that creates the file. Then I would N8N, I would nano it and just paste it in there, not N8N nano. So then we have our system file updated. If it wasn't there already, it obviously is because you are running N8N. But then I made this other file here called worker service. And Oh yeah, it does this slash here just to help with the escaping that. But once again, all you had to do was say touch that and we're in this folder. Now we have the file and we just paste that particular text into it. And so what this does is it just says, okay, the node version. Again, I don't know if that's even needed. It's interesting stuff. I don't understand enough about that. Execution mode Q. And then we mark down some of the other lines here, which to me seems out of whack because they're different, but I'll come back to that later. It's working. And it's running though, C start, and this is running as a worker. And so then the next step is to just tell system D or system control here that I wanna reload it so it rereads these files. And then I wanna restart or start. And then I just decided I want to run like four or whatever, maybe one. This has this one doesn't even have that many CPUs, but one of the other ones had like eight or 16, so I ran a bunch, okay? And that's about it. So at this point now I have a bunch of workers. Now, one thing you can do, and let's just look at two things here. <clears throat> we have the HTOP to show what's going on in this machine and not much at the moment, but if I run something, we can maybe see it show, but Here's our N8N, and we can actually do to see we have our three workers in our N8N there. So you can see it go in there. So at this point, we're ready. It's working. Now, I'm going to go to the UI and run something. And I wanted to also show that when you're trying to troubleshoot this area, you can do a status. So you can say, okay, what's the status of that? Or number one. Or I could say of N8 in itself. And this is, you got to remember all this stuff is in your history. So when you just click the up arrow or control R, you can just type away and get to that. So it's not that bad. It's intimidating at first. 
Here's a good example of, it looks like I forgot to upload this guy. So I'm gonna run that and just let that go for a moment now. And so that just helps the system D or system, yeah, I guess it is system D to read those files and make sure it's up to date. And at that point, that's it. Once you're ready to go, this is a different system and it shows that it's running. It took a while to do these numbers. And then when I start a process, you won't get the immediate success. You'll, success. you'll sometimes get a queue. It's just really that easy. So I wanted to just get the uh, test queue in place. So basically I'll just reload this and we'll see a bunch of jobs just showing up. And then if we go to the terminal, we could run this guy here and just see Redis starting to take those jobs and pick them up, put them on the queue and then they get picked up. And of course they get finished. The UI will sometimes show queue. Sometimes on my other machine, I get it working on longer jobs, but not on this one. I'm not sure why. I just wanted to verify that it was working so we can see that they're being processed. That's how easy it is to get the queue running on your N8N. Now, some other notes I had was like, you know, you can install Redis pretty easily on your server. You can just check it out by running that. And then as you saw with that command, we could do a monitor, or in my case, I grepped for the output that would kind of prove the queue was working. The queue, the jobs are being put on the queue. Now, other things you can do is remember if you upload those files, you have to restart them. So you can kind of just have a little script here. And remember, ChatGPT is so in Claude, they're all so good at this stuff that it really makes ops a lot easier and a lot less frustrating than it used to be. And then, you know, one of the things you gotta remember here is if you do have trouble, you can use this, com this command here and we'll just see like number one is running, number two is running. And you can actually do journaling, but I don't know if the server, for some reason the server doesn't do it, but typically you can get some output like that. And, and that's nice too, because you get live output. But mostly things like that will help you know if it failed, because if it did error out, it would tell you, and then you just paste that into chat GPT and go. But that's really it. Those two files updated and put into place, and then all of a sudden you'll have a nice, your machine will handle a lot more jobs concurrently. All right, that's it.